All right, uh, today we're down here in the basement. Uh, I've got to go through a transmission uh, to try and check the gears and everything for somebody that I'm building it for, and I thought, while we're at it, we might as well just go ahead and show how to pull down, and I guess essentially rebuild one of these things, if you just uh, take a little bit of time and have a very small selection of tools. Overall, it's pretty easy, and I wish I would have uh, got into this much sooner because it's so much nicer to be able to pull a few spare parts out of one than to go ahead and try and track down and have an entire trans shipped from, of course, across the country is the only time you can ever find them. But let's go ahead and pull this thing apart and see what we find inside. All right, the first thing I always do is go ahead and pull off the snout on the trans here. Uh, you can kind of see it with the blue thing sticking off. If we can get it kind of focused there, uh, you can barely make out that there are actually four, I believe, 13 millimeter uh, bolts that hold this thing on, unless you've got a wrench to get to the uh, fourth one on the other, on the upper left usually have to go ahead and pull the speed distance sensor out. No big deal, of course, and uh, we'll go ahead and do that now. All right, so I've gone ahead and taken the snout off. I do want to point out, just so that everybody knows, I want to make sure that you understand you don't have to take the snout off if you're doing, let's say, you know, the fifth gear, the fifth gear synchro, um, inspecting the gears or what have you. I'm just going to be pulling down this whole trans, so I wanted to make sure uh, that I'd be able to stand the trans upright on the bench and be able to work with it a little bit easier. I'm tall, and this bench isn't uh, very high, so for me it's easier just to stand the trans straight up on its face so I can get to the end and everything that needs to be done there, and that's why I always start off this way. That might not work for you, but it's what works for me. All right, I know it's extremely difficult to see in there, but um, this is the inspection cover having be been removed after I set it up on the bench there. Uh, this is Chrysler's A555 transmission, if I didn't mention that at the top of the video. It's really easy to identify that it's the 555 once you get this inspection cover off because if you can kind of see over there on the right the gear set is really coarse pitch. Um, the 555 and the 568 were the two most coarse pitch gear sets that Chrysler offered in these. They're also the strongest transmissions and uh, again if you want to identify that or in general just look at the gear set by moving the forks over on the left side there, you can kind of inspect the individual dog teeth of the gears. You can look at the synchros and get a decent idea, at least, of what's going on with the transmission uh, by removing this cover alone. Another thing you can do, most of the cars, when they have troubles with the transmissions, especially from being run low on oil, you can go ahead and remove the actual in cover and check out the fifth gear and fifth gear synchro. Um, you can even remove and service that in the vehicle just by removing that cover. But regardless, uh, this will give you an idea of what kind of trans you're looking at because the Lord knows those tags are missing and or swapped out and what have you over the years. So this is a great way to go ahead and look at it and identify. All right, we've got the uh, in cover off right now. And although it's kind of dark down here, you can see on the left there's the fifth gear synchro, an actual fifth gear below it. And then on the right there is the, uh, in the input shaft and uh, you'll have to go ahead and remove that nut. They do make a special tool to remove that. Generally speaking, I'll just go ahead and use an impact, but uh, nonetheless, there is a specific tool to remove it. Makes it a lot easier. I do have most of the tools uh, specific to building these Chrysler transmission with, transmissions, which I picked up off of eBay over the years for really cheap. Uh, there was one time I found a guy that was uh, essentially getting rid of all of his Chrysler transmission tools and really for maybe five or ten cents on the dollar I picked up uh, the vast majority of the tools needed to do these transmissions. So I'm kind of fortunate in that regard but if you go ahead and just keep an eye out that should really help. You can make your own tools or honestly with the vast majority of the stuff on here uh, you can use other more general tools to get the job done and you won't be affected at all. It is kind of nice, though, I think, to have the actual tools that are meant for the job and uh, a little bit easier, a little bit faster, in my opinion. But whatever works for you obviously works. Okay, I've already removed the um, lock pin that actually goes into the uh, rail here for the shifters. Oh, that's all coming apart on me now that I try to sneak it back on there. Uh, there is a lock ring, and I do say lock ring, uh, which holds the... Uh, whole assembly on the back in addition to this uh, little piece here that uh, holds the uh, fork onto the shift rail. 
Uh, lock rings definitely different than snap rings, so make sure you get some actual lock ring pliers when you are picking up your tools to do this. Uh, like I say, my synchronizer just, synchronizer just kind of part on me, so I got stuff flying everywhere, but that's okay. It's easy to go back together. Uh, there's the top plate. Here's the spring uh, that goes in there, just holds the little wings to the uh, outer ring here. Here's the uh, shift fork, which I gotta tell you, these uh, shift fork pads look pretty darn good, if not in excellent shape. So those will probably go ahead and stay in. They're getting hard to find. Uh, actually, now there's one guy on TurboMopar.com that makes them for these transmissions, so that'd be a great option. They are bronze rather than the, uh, I think it's Torlon is actually the, uh, the stock product that's on here. But regardless, these look good. Those are gonna stay. Pick up the parts that have fallen down. And uh, you can see that uh, here's the old blocker ring that will come off. And uh, when I get it unjammed here, I got it coming off at an angle. Uh, come off there, and I got my little wing guys that uh, always seem to want to fall out. There's the other spring from the back side. There's the uh, outside of the assembly. No big deal. These, generally speaking, especially on fifth year, uh, no problems there. And then uh, you got your brass. Uh, ring, and uh, I'm not sure how easily you can see on here, but the teeth, uh, both on fifth gear itself and on the brass ring, both look great. This transmission's probably had a good life. There was still a lot of oil in the trans when I went ahead and set it up on its side. Good tip, by the way, uh, to go ahead and put some rags in there because you will uh, turn your basement into a super fun site by just uh, setting it up with nothing in the way to catch the oil. But regardless, good looking fifth gear, good looking uh, brass ring here. Things are really looking up for this transmission. I'm really not anticipating uh, having to do much to rebuild it uh, at all. Uh, the end goal for this trans will be to have uh, one of the uh, Quaif torque biasing differentials installed in it. And uh, other than that, just go ahead and freshen it up. But again, looking at fifth gear, seeing how nice and clean everything is, how nice those shift fork pads were looking there. I think overall we're gonna find that uh, this one just needs to be inspected. Uh, and then of course all the tolerances checked, shimmed accordingly, and then put back together. Not really a big deal with this one. Okay, since we are in the basement, um, I have decided to go ahead and go outside and use the impact. I started to use uh, a breaker bar with that big um, adjustable wrench over there, the big uh, job, but I thought, why kill myself to do this? There's just no reason to put in that kind of effort when I can just carry this case up to the garage outside. And uh, to make it a little easier on myself, what I'm going to go ahead and do is um, I'm going to go ahead and remove this uh, bearing retainer plate that's on the top there. I've already got those six bolts loosened and started. Uh, those are 13 millimeter, and then the bolts over here on the side, sorry for getting in the way of the light, right here all these 15 millimeter jobs will need to come out uh, to remove the differential and uh, I highly recommend what I've done with all these things, uh, you can kind of see over here I go ahead and I put the bolts just wherever they came from in the piece that's coming off. So here's the snout on the trans and I've got the uh, four bolts, four 13 millimeter bolts to hold those in right back on here. I'm going to do the same thing with the uh, plate uh, that the bearing rides in. I'm going to do the same thing with the cover, especially the cover, because going into the cover, these are all uh, dramatically different lengths of bolt, and although it's really easy to kind of figure that out when you're done uh, and get it all back together, it just goes a little bit more quickly if you go ahead and put them back in where they came from. A little bit easier and nicer. We'll go ahead and pull these two pieces off. The differential will pop right out, and that'll make the case a little bit easier to carry upstairs. These aren't heavy by any means, but given the fact that I want to get oil all over the uh, house, uh, and my wife will want to kill me, but also myself will go ahead and do it that way so I can stuff a couple towels in there, what have you. Uh, I think these transmissions only weigh about 125 pounds anyway, and that's probably on the high side. So not a big deal. I mean, I've got, I think, eight different transmissions down here in the basement. They're all carried up and down by me. And uh, I think that would have gotten old by now if it was uh, really too heavy. But uh, nonetheless, we'll pull the diff out and make that a little bit easier on us and enjoy life a little bit. All right, as you can see, we've got the diff out. It's sitting off over back to the left there. I usually just go ahead and set them right in the uh, diff cover. A uh, good way to keep them in place, stop them from rolling around. And again, you can see all the bolts in their proper locations in the cover. Um, got the thing all ready to go. It should be nice and light now. Uh, that four pinion diff uh, does weigh quite a bit. 
if you weren't aware with this particular transmission, one of the reasons they do the quote hybrid transmissions is because the um, the actual ring gear uh, contains the back cover to the diff and the uh, spot for the bearing to ride on. So it's not like the other differentials uh, from the transmissions where you can just go ahead and bolt a new ring gear onto the, the carrier there. Uh, with this one, the uh, bearing is integral to the uh, actual ring gear on these. So that's why guys will take uh, the other style and put those in and what have you. Uh, not what we're going to be doing with this trans uh, because this one's going to stay 385 final drive and it's going to get the uh, torque biasing differential installed. We'll have to shim that up later when that arrives, but uh, at this time we're going to be good to go to take it upstairs and use the impact to get that nut off of the shaft. I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see it on there, but uh, these nuts, if you look kind of right in the middle there, and then in a couple more spots on here, oh right there you can see it really well. Yeah, that got it. Okay, so right there you can actually see where the factory went ahead and kind of pressed uh, the back part of that nut that was on the shaft and caused it to be a really tight fit. I mean, it's not like they staked it, but it's, you know, essentially the same principle. Made it very difficult to get off, but, uh, you know, impact no problem. Uh, that big crescent wrench I've got always works perfectly on these, and uh, that's great. Uh, if you don't have that, you can obviously go ahead and use a br big breaker bar, but uh, just let it be known that it will take quite a bit of effort to get this thing off. And again, I just said, why am I doing this to myself down here? Why don't I just go upstairs, uh, go out to the garage, and uh, take care of business the right way, use the impact. So, got that off, and now, if you look back here, you'll see that the, uh, that gear is just going to slide right off as soon as we get into focus here. So, there's our gear, and uh, as soon as you take the nut off, I mean, it just comes off right like that. Super easy, no problems whatsoever. So, we got that off, we're going to be ready for the next step here in a minute. All right, our next step is going to be to remove these two 10 millimeter bolts, which go into the uh, chromoly. Well, I guess for when you install a chromoly plate, this one isn't yet, I don't believe, but uh, nonetheless, two 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolts will come off. Then, if you're installing your chromoly plate, which a lot of guys do, and uh, I recommend, uh, this would be your plate right here. So this is what be you know, toss this thing to the side and uh, get the chromoly one out put it right on there, then you could go ahead and just re-RTV everything, put it back together. We're going to go further because we want to inspect the whole shebang here. So that's what we're going to do. We'll keep going. We're going to keep uh, digging into this trans, get it all apart, get it all clean to make sure it's going to be good to go because it will be uh, behind a fairly powerful motor and we want to make sure that it's going to live. So going through everything, replacing what needs to be replaced. Uh, so far it looks like that's going to be a pretty minimal amount of stuff. But uh, if it's not, we'll go ahead and get new parts in, and this thing will be ready to go to handle a lot of horsepower. Well, that's really dark. Uh, all right, so you can barely see it here, I know. I didn't really want to move the camera, I'm being lazy. Uh, but your uh, bearing for the, uh, the main shaft here with all your gears on it and the forks and everything, there's going to be a snap ring right here that we're going to have to go ahead and uh, pull off. No big deal. Once we do that, that'll free this whole back plate here that you can see I'm pulling up everything there. Um, once we free that up, this plate will come off. Everything else should come out fairly easily. Not too much more to do at this point. Alright, we got everything loosened for time purposes. I mean, it's just a simple ring over here that comes off. And uh, no big deal. Toss that to the side. And then uh, cover uh, comes off pretty easily after that. You just give it a little tug here. Right off. Good to go. Next step. Okay, so with the cover off, uh, what I usually do is I go ahead and lift up on the intermediate and uh, the input shaft just enough to where I can go ahead and weasel out uh, your reverse here. So, reverse comes out on one piece. Don't lose it because the shaft can come out and then also uh, there's the sleeve. So, going to want to hang on to that if you ever want to back up. But, if not, I guess, you know, toss in the file. Okay, with just a tad bit of extra jimmying around, you can get it to where your input shaft comes right out. This one's looking pretty good. I like the way that uh, the bearings and all the teeth are looking. They look nice and happy. And happy is the way that I like my uh, equipment to look, especially when it comes to the transmissions. Again, this 555 transmission, notice how coarse the pitch is on this uh, intermediate shaft, or excuse me, input shaft here uh, for the very uh, coarse pitch gears. Uh, so, very durable. We like that. 
Alright, next step, somewhat difficult to see, but in the middle of the screen there is a 6 millimeter bolt uh, that goes through the... Let's see if I can zoom out far enough here. I can, yes. Uh, it goes through the uh, shaft right here uh, for the shift forks. Uh, you go ahead and pull that bolt out, you can pull that shaft, and then the whole deal is going to come out. Uh, just make sure your shift forks don't go falling everywhere because, again, those shift fork pads, not very common, no longer in production. Good luck finding them. Go to turbomopar.com and find a set from Lingle on there who sells the nice bronze ones. Uh, but nonetheless, it'll all come out as soon as we get that pin out, 6 millimeter bolt, and we'll be good to go. All right, just a few seconds later, we got the pin out. We take the rod out. Great. Next thing you know, the whole deal is going to come right out all together as one piece, most likely. Always got to jimmy it around. And that takes me forever, so we'll come back when I get all this business out and I can get it with an angle where I'm not blocking your view. Okay, well that was actually pretty amazing uh, how little time that took me. Fastest I've ever done it, really. All I needed to do was actually stand in front of the transmission rather than behind the camera. Uh, again, all these shift forks, as you can see, will come right off. Um, and uh, there they are. I'll go ahead and inspect these. Wow, these pads actually look really good. Very little uh, use on this transmission. I think uh, the 3-4 pad, there's one of them that'll probably be replaced. But, uh, you know, of course that means going with a whole new set, basically. I don't know. We'll see if I can scare up a couple pads. But nonetheless, uh, good to go here. We'll probably call it a day. Put this video up, and in the next one we'll go ahead, once my bench is cleaned off and everything, we'll go ahead and pull apart the whole gear set. We'll try and show you the difference, maybe, between the, um, the older style 1-2 uh, Synchro and the newer style 1-2 Synchro that is in uh, this 89 Trans, I believe it is. So uh, get that going. And uh, we'll catch up with you later. Thanks a lot.